income of the mutual fund will be exempt because mutual fund people invest money on the behalf of the you and me so we give them exemption the best part is this so they will be able to invest more save more if they are able to save more they can distribute the income to the unit holders more these are investor protection funds again mind you these are made by the sebi or made by the uh, stock exchanges or made by the commodity exchange stock exchange will consist of i am talking about 1023 ea 1023 ea let's see 1023 ea 1023 ea is a notified investor protection fund made by nsc and bsc nsc and bsc these funds why made all the fines and whatever the money they collect they use it for invest they for investor awareness and protection similarly just like i make a fund in my class if you come late i'll charge 20 rupees if you are making noise in the class i'll check 5 rupees so all the funds which will collect will use it for your benefit and actually i do so similarly here the nsc and bsc people they collect certain monies for fines and penalties etc they credit their amount in the investor protection fund which can be used for dissemination of information for jago grahak jago you call it in hindi to niveshak ko to make them more aware to know what is going around and so that they are not cheated by people so promotion of investor ke liye we use the funds similarly commodity exchange like mcx multi commodity exchange international commodity exchange or national commodity exchange they also make investor uh, investor protection fund the amount is used for what do you call the uh, uh, awareness and help of the investor so that they can take informed decisions these are the investor protection fund made by the depository depository is nsdl and you know, national security deposit limited so these which which opens a dmat accounts in india nsdl acha these are venture capital funds venture capital funds they provide private equity to startups so these are funds which provides financial assistance to people like you and me if we want to build up a startup or we want to start a business so whatever income of a venture capital ya venture capital is there so whatever the income they book office they go provide funds so they get some return so whatever the return they get is exempt similarly this is like an investment fund 23 ba 20 1024 friends 1024 is that people who are trade unions in india the unions the employees have the unions because the unions work for the welfare of the employees a single employee management will not hear his or her voice a single employee voice is not heard sim single employees voice is not heard by the management so isliye the employees get together form a union management hi hi gali gali mein shor hai management chor hai hai na they make their noise heard they make their noise heard so the trade union people take money from the members 100 rupees per month 500 rupees yearly whatever contribution chanda what they'll get is exempt so trade union take little bit of money from their members whatever income of the trade union is is exempt but you remember income from house property and income from other sources is exempt if other incomes are there of a trade union that will be taxable so mind you in every section please pay attention to what kind of income is exempt it is not you are covered in this section 10 your entire income is exempt na baba na your certain kind of incomes will be exempt so you need to remember to so under 1024 a trade union people their income will be exempt of house property and other sources so if their capital gain is there if they are if they are uh, what do you call some kind of business activity is there that will be taxable now this is provident fund 1025 a uh, if you remember uh, provident fund income on the point is spf statutory provident fund this is a provident fund maintained by the government 
under the PF Act 1925. Statutory Provident Fund is a provident fund maintained by the government under PF Act 1925. The provident fund will be getting lakhs and crores of money. They will be investing the money and the investing the money will be exempt. And uh, statutory provident fund this is deposit link insurance fund and this any income received by trustees on behalf of recognized provident fund, approved superannuation fund, approved gratuity fund. So whenever the trustees receives money out of RPF, ASF or AGF approved gratuity fund that is also exempt. So you need to remember what kind of income and whose hence the amount is exempt. This is employee state insurance fund. This is ESI. ESI is applicable for state government employees in which the government deducts a certain amount as premium for ESI premium. The funds are invested by ESI fund and income of the ESI fund is also exempt. Again, this 1026 is income of a member of scheduled tribe, scheduled tribe and the scheduled or tribals you can say tribals if they are living in Nagaland, Manipur, Tripura, Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram. So tribal persons living in these areas their income is exempt. But mind you which kind of income? Such income is available in spite of income which accrue rise from any source in such area or income by way of dividend interest or security rising from such. So you are earning income from this area. So tribal person earning income from a tribal area is exempt. But is earning income from Delhi, earning income from UP, earning income from Bihar, that will be taxable. So mind you, I am telling you, so you have to remember. Achha, section 10 is more like a theoretical chapter. Practical questions might be asked like this. This is the income, will it be taxable, will it be exempt? Exempt under this section, exempt under that clause. So what you need to do, I will recommend purely make a chart, two columns. One column sections under column in one line, yes, in one line, the crux of that section. So, 10 1 agriculture income, but do not write exempt exempt. We know agriculture income 10 2 A partnership firms profit by member. Understand 10 5 LTC amount. So, do not go in depth because they might be not more than 3 to four questions out of this. I do not expect more than four questions. Four is also on the higher side. So from one mark to four mark, more or less the answer question might be asked. And the questions will not be very difficult also, mind you. Next is 10 clause 32, income of the minor child. You have a minor, Appu, who is less than 18 years. Appu is going to school. Why how can Appu have income? Appu is going to school, he is not a be educated enough, have not a job. His father was very clever, yeah he is very clever. He made a FD in the name of Appu and says interest is taxable in the hands of Appu. Why it is not Appu's money? Appu does not have even brains, obviously investing brains. He did not earn himself. So government assumes Income of the minor shall be clubbed under 641A in the hands of that parent whose total income before clubbing is greater. So any income of the minor is to be clubbed in the hands of the parent. Remember this. But three incomes of the minor are not to be clubbed. Three incomes of the minor not to be clubbed. One minor is handicapped under 80U. Another minor, another is minor. Uh, is earning income from manual work. He is working on a construction site. And thirdly, income of the minor due to application of skill, knowledge, talent. Apart from three incomes, all incomes of the minor are to be clubbed. In whose hands? Father, mother, whose total income is greater. But if the amount is to be clubbed, father or mother will feel the pain. To mitigate that pain, government is giving a small dose of exemption and that is 1032. 
if the minor income is to be claimed. It is per minor per year. Exemption 1500. Such that peanuts. Yes, that's peanuts. That should have been 15,000 long ago, but they have not increased the limit, so we can't help it. So, if the minor's income is clubbed in the hands of the parent, that parent can claim exemption up to 1500. So, for example, my minor having income 10,000, 8500 will be added in my hands if my income is greater. If my wife's income is greater, so 10,000 minus 1500, so 8500 will be added in wife's income per minor. If got 20 minors, God help you, you will not be living, I suppose you will be dead anymore. But still you got 20 minors per minor per year 1500. Next, these are dividend incomes 1034, 1035. Under 1034, uh, you receive dividend from a domestic company. Under 1035, you receive income from units of UTI. Write it down. 1034, you receive dividend from a domestic company and 1035, you receive dividend, you receive income from UTI, write it down clearly. But 1034 is not relevant to a larger extent because under section, mind you what I am saying, 115 BBDA, under section 115 BBDA, Dividend in excess of 10 lakhs is taxable in the hands of recipient. Dividend from a domestic company in excess of 10 lakhs from a domestic company is taxable in the hands of recipient at the rate of 10 percent. And where 115 BBD is applicable, 1034 is not applicable. Mind you, and 115 BBDA is not applicable for 222E, that is deemed dividend. To cut the long story short, 1034 is now relevant only for 222E, that will remain exempt. Whereas other dividends will not be covered at 1034, that is actual dividend and other dividends except 222E, that will be covered at 115 BBDA. Now 1035 is for income of mutual funds. You invest in mutual funds, badle mein, in return you are going to get money, that is interest, that is interest or dividend, both is exempt. Repeating again, 1034 is dividends from domestic company and 1035 is income from units of mutual fund. Income might include dividend as well as interest, so write it down. 1034 applicable where 115 BBDA not applicable. Write it down. 1034 applicable where 115 BBDA not applicable. Second point, under 115 BBDA, dividend in excess of 10 lakhs taxable at the rate of 10%. Under 115 BBDA, dividend in excess of 10 lakhs taxable at 10% not applicable, 115 BBDA not applicable on 222E, 115 BBDA not applicable on 222E, 222E will be covered at 1034 and 1035 consists of unit holders, income from units or mutual fund, whether that income is dividend or interest is exempt. Next, 1039 is international sporting events if they are held in India and the finance ministry notifies that event. This happened with Commonwealth Games. So, income of the Commonwealth Games arising to the Commonwealth, uh, what were the organizing, organizers, that might be the Indian Olympic Association or whatever the point is. If an international sporting event having participation of more than two countries is being organized in India. The organizers can make an application to the government. Government can notify the event under 1039, income will be exempt of the organizers from that event. If it is not notified, then not. Now, any grants are received by a subsidy company that will be exempt under 1040. Under 1041, these are electricity generation and transmission utilities. And uh, 
this was for capital gain arising before 146 but the point was income from transfer of, again this is historical in nature i don't think you need to do it 1042 consists of entities which have been made by the government for not profit purposes 1042 let's read any specified income to a body established by the government for not for profit purposes so these are npos ngos made by the government for welfare of the people might be any entity and notified by the central government for the purpose of this clause will be fully examined so if they are not notified by the government incomes of that non-profit entity will not be exempt under 1042 next is concept of reverse mortgage concept of reverse mortgage 1043 this is important very important now what is reverse mortgage let's understand ramlal story friends ramlal is a hard working man lifelong he worked very hard he earned income and now he has retired all his money went for children's education for building the house now his children have become big now he's become old children are not taking care of him taking his children and bichara he does not have any money now how will he run his family his himself and his wife the children not supporting them very bad they should be supporting the old parents now what did he do is he can take a loan on the security of the house but if he takes a loan or security of the house for consumption purpose who will return the loan and how will he return the emis will be starting on the next month to use the loan amount and to return the loan amount is a different thing here the concept reverse mortgage comes into picture once you die you cannot take the home in your grave so what does he do so he uh, uh, he mortgages the house he mortgages the house with the bank that is known as reverse mortgage scheme under the reverse mortgage scheme under the reverse mortgage scheme under the reverse mortgage scheme the uh, the property is given to the bank under reverse mortgage and under the reverse mortgage under the reverse mortgage so ramlal uh, what should he do he wants to take a loan because he wants to run the family children are supporting him but he'll have to pay the emi now here there is an important scheme that's called reverse mortgage scheme he can go to the bank he wants money the property in which he is living is of 50 lakhs he'll say to the bank i don't want 50 lakhs you pay me 20000 per month bank will start paying 20000 per month but put the house as mortgage with the bank generally in a loan you get the lump sum amount and you repay the emis but under the reverse mortgage, the bank will give you 20,000 per month so that the old man can run his family. As long as he is alive, bank will not come to take back the money. Yes. Or even if after his death, her, his wife is there, bank will give money to him, her wife, his wife also 20,000 per month. And then both people die, the old man and his wife then the bank people will say to the children hey your parents have taken 20 lakhs for the last five years from us now you repay back the loan with interest now the children will say gosh we don't pay your father had already mortgaged the house with the bank you have no option either pay us the money the children will be asked or will auction the house so that's important to take care of your parents from this point of view also if they reverse mortgage the uh, house with the bank the house is mortgaged with the bank they will get monthly amount and they don't have to pay emis as long as they are alive so at least they can sp Are bhai, what is enjoyment enjoyment is till you are alive whether it is enjoyment is because of other person's money but the paying back the money is the pain so do, as long as you are not caught, you don't have to pay back, you are enjoying the money. 
So during your lifetime, you have enjoyed a lot. Now who will suffer? And they have to suffer because the children didn't take care of their parents. So though there was a point of view, some income tax officers used to tax the amount of income the old man used to receive in the hands of the old man. And government said, no, whatever amount is received under 1043 by the old man, whether as regular amount or monthly amount or a yearly amount will not be taxable because that is not an income. That is a loan amount which has to be returned, obviously not by the old man, but by the children. So the reverse mortgage amount will not be taxable. This is pension trust are talking about NPS. So these trust people, uh, the NPS will also be investing its money. They receive any amount as income exempt. This is Union Public State Commission 1045. This con conducts a civil service examination in a country. The income will be exempt. And these are 1046 bodies, authorities constituted in India. Let's study what exactly it is. Uh, body or corporate constituted by the central government general public welfare not engaged in commercial entities again public welfare entities constituted by the government income is exempt infrastructure debt funds again this is fund which provides loans and advances to the people whatever income they get is exempt this 1048 and 1048 b is when iran was put under sanctions by the us for developing the nuclear power so they wanted to trade with India, but the trade in dollars could not be possible because of the sanctions. So Indian government said, we'll pay you in Indian rupees. We'll open an account in India of the foreign company that was National Iranian Oil Company. We'll pay in rupees. You supply the oil. Because if dollars payment was there, dollars is a currency of the US, they will put sanctions on the bank. So in order to circumvent the sanctions, government invented this concept yuko bank of kolkata they opened the branch of the national iranian oil company they paid amount in money in rupees but if any amount received in india by a foreign company that is taxable in india so government exempted the sale of crude oil income of the national iranian oil company under section 1048 and 1048 b this is national financial holding company again the income is exempt and uh, one more very important exemption is 10 double a now what exactly is 10 double a friends friends 10 double a is unit of special economic zone friends special economic zone are those what do you call uh, undertakings units or area in fact special economic zone is an area notified in the special economic zone act notified in the special economic zone act and uh, these Special economic zones, person who go and invest money in special economic zone enjoy tax benefits. So me as a manufacturer, go and establish my unit in a special economic zone, I will be entitled to exemption under 10 AA. So these are those entities who go in the special economic zone and invest. Now I'm going to get an exemption under 10 AA if certain conditions are there, manufacturing should be there. Uh, I should not be an old buying a new bottle. I should be a freshly new entity. It's not old entity by changing the name. You start up a unit in special economic zone, fresh entity, and should be purchasing new planted machinery. Now the benefit is for 15 years. The exemption is for 15 years. First five years, 100% profits will be exempt. Next five years, 50% will be exempt. That's law 6 to 10. And from 11 to 15, last 5 years, 50% um, profits or amount transfer to special economic zone reserve, whichever is less. Repeating again, 15 year benefit, tax holiday period for a unit of special economic zone. First 5 years, first 5 years, 100% eligible profits. 6 to 10 years, 50% eligible profits. From 11 to 15, mind you, 11 to 15, the profits exempt 11 to 15 the profits exempt 11 to 15 the profits exempt will be tell me tell me tell me 
that will be 50 percent of the eligible profits or amount transferred to special economic zone whichever is less now my point is what are eligible profits so write it down but a simple formula no issues one is profit of the 10 AA undertaking multiplied by export turnover divided by total turnover profits of the 10 AA unit that means I am a special economic zone unit I am establishing a unit there my profits are 10 lakhs write it down profits are 10 lakhs my export turnover export turnover is uh, approximately 80 lakhs and my total turnover is 1 crore that means out of total turnover of 1 crore I am exporting goods out of India 80 percent 80 percent profits will be exempt 10 lakhs is profit 8 lakhs will be exempt so in proportion of your export turnover you are going to get exemption at 10 AA so first to five years eligible profits 100 percent 6 to 10 years eligible profit 50 percent 11 to 15 years eligible profit tell me tell me tell me tell me tell me 50 percent of eligible profits or amount transfer to special economic zone reinvestment reserve account whichever is less and what is eligible profits profits of the undertaking multiplied by export turnover divided by total turnover here there's a question also you can solve it so this chart is given on in your study material they are certain exemption which are fully exempt we did like agriculture income awards pension just go through them some partly exempt exemptions like HRA NPS you just go 40 percent 60 percent you can do this there are certain important case laws what is 14a I just tell you the crux any income is exempt Uh -huh. any income is exempt the expenditure is also exempt you cannot subtract that expenditure from taxable income that is 14a just go through them and uh, that's all great bingo the chapter is finished so just recap in two minutes but is section 10 incomes which do not form part of total income make a list taste shape column section and amount and uh, deductions are those amount which are subtracted from taxable income so jo incomes are not taxable they are thrown out they are exempt income which are taxable we give them deductions and what are rebates and reliefs they are given from tax liability i hope you understood the topic i enjoyed a lot and i i hope you also enjoyed thank you take care god bless